All right. It made a mama happy, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, I want to share something with y'all because I see people waiting on happiness. There's, there's a lot of people that they say, you know, I, I'm waiting to be happier. I, instead of looking for happiness, and I want to share something with y'all. Whenever you look for happiness, you're going to find it. There's something that we have. We can have joy because the Bible says that our joy comes from the Lord. But it's different between having joy in your heart and being happy. A lot of times people uh, says, you know, I have joy in my heart. And they'll, they'll, you know, they just don't show the joy that only God can give you. But I'm going to tell you, you can make a choice about whether or not you're happy about what's going on in your life because Everywhere you look, there's opportunities to be happy if you choose, and, and there's joy and happiness all around, but a lot of times people don't notice it. So I want to share something with y'all, if y'all don't mind, because a lot of times things that makes me happy may not make y'all happy. I'm going to tell you this. Today, I was looking for my wife whenever I got here at church, and I didn't see her, and I, and I looked, and I didn't see her car, but then all of a sudden, I walked out the door, and she was walking across there, and whenever she did, I smiled at her. She smiled at me, and, and I said, where you been? I've been looking for her. She said, I've been wandering around everywhere trying to do things and everything, but the first thing she did whenever she saw me is she smiled at me. And I want to know, have y'all smiled this morning? So I want y'all to do me a favor. I'd love for everybody in here to smile if you don't mind. All right, I'm going to look. Now, what I would like for you to do is I would like for you to look at that person beside you and I want you to tell them to smile at you. Let me hear you. All right, all right, let, wait, 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 wait. There's some of y'all that I'm looking at, some of you are laughing at the person's what you're doing, but I want you to look at that person and say, and say, I love you, would you smile at me? Go ahead, let me hear you. All right. There you some of y'all, it makes y'all uncomfortable because you may not have been sitting by somebody that you knew this morning. And so you looked at them, but listen, whenever we're happy in the Lord, when we've got joy in our heart and we know the Lord, we should love that person beside us to the point that we look at them and we say, hey, I love you. Would you smile at me? So I want y'all to know you got that part took, and, uh, took care of. So if you'll turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12, and I want y'all to listen to this scripture. There's a reason that I had you to tell the person beside you that, that hey, smile at me, because we've got people around us that can change our lives a lot. We've got people around us that the Bible tells that we have people, and the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 1, it says, wherefore seeing. I wanted every one of y'all to see that the person beside you, they can have happiness in their heart. They can have joy in their heart. And, but a lot of times, people don't notice that joy and that happiness until they see it in all of us. So the Bible says, wherefore seeing also we have surrounded or compassed about us a great cloud of witness. Let me share something with you, what you have right here. You have a great cloud of witness. You have, how many of y'all, how many of y'all know that if today was your last day on this earth, that you're going to be in heaven tomorrow? Raise your hand. All right. Right there, if you look around, you have a great cloud of witnesses. But listen, there's people in here this morning that may not have already been listening. And if they hadn't been listening this morning so far, if they hadn't got that happiness in their heart this morning and had not paid attention to what I said, they would be looking around and all of a sudden, all of y'all raised your hand and they would be going, what did they raise their hand about? I didn't pay attention to that. So let me ask you again, how many of y'all know without a shadow of a doubt that if you, if the, today was your last day on this earth, tomorrow you'd be in heaven? Raise your hand. All right, I'm looking around. See if there's anybody that says that they're lost. All right, thank you. You can put them down. I saw some of you smile whenever you did it. I saw some of you that you, that's what the Bible was talking about, having a great cloud of witness around you. Now what you are doing, you're able to be a cloud of witness to everybody that was beside you. Now let me tell you something else that happened. Whenever your, your child beside you saw you raise their hand, 
You raised that hand beside that kid. That kid was thinking, oh, mom and daddy raised their hand. They're saying that they're a great cloud of witness. They're saying that I love the Lord. They're saying that they're going to heaven. And these children are watching you. They pay attention to you. And let me share something else with you. All these, all these uh, youth that's over here, they look and they, they look to see if all of you was going to raise your hand and pay attention to what God was telling us here. The Bible says that we have a great cloud of witness and let us lay aside every weight. You know, yesterday we were out here working and I saw a lot of witnessing going on out there. I saw a lot of people that had joy in their heart. I saw a lot of people smiling, but I also seen people also try to pick up things that they wasn't able to pick up. Now, I want y'all to know, whenever we're trying to pick up something out there, there was, they was some, some uh, plows and things out there that, that I was going to just reach down there. And listen, I'll, I'll admit it. If it would have been 20 years ago, I would have been able to take that plow and drag it over here and move it. But I'm going to tell you what I'm not able to do now. I'm not able to drag things like I used to do. Amen. But I'll tell you what I'm able to do. I'm able to be drug around. I'm able for someone to come up and say, hey, do you need help with that? And I'm saying, yeah, yeah, y'all come and help me. And then whenever people are dragging it, I feel like they're dragging me now. And we get to the point that we need help every single day. The older I get, the more I need help. The older I get, the more I need somebody to uplift me. The older I get, the more I need people to pray for me. The older I get, the more I need people to be stepping up and, and, and proclaiming Jesus in a special way. This is what this cloud of witness is. And if we're not careful, we'll let every weight of sin, which does so easily beset us, a sin that holds us back from doing what God wants us to do. And it, and it says, and let us run that race with patience, which is set before me. I'm going to share something with y'all. I don't have much patience. Matter of fact, I struggle with patience. Matter of fact, I want y'all to know, I read, and I'm going to read you the fruits of the Spirit. You ready? In Galatians 5, 22, let me read you the fruits of the Spirit. What I would like for you to do is I'd like for you to ask yourself, do I have this, 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 and this? All right. So let me read you the fruits of the Spirit. The Bible says, but the fruits of the Spirit is love. Do you have love in your heart? See, I got some love. I love y'all. I love my family. I love the Lord. Man, I, I have love that just kind of oozes out of me. I love people. It's all, but listen to this. The fruits of the Spirit is love, joy. You know, everywhere I go, I find joy no matter what I'm doing. Even if I go to places I don't want to be, I still find something that I can say, I'm enjoying it. Listen to this. I have peace. The Bible says that we have a peace about us. If I was to ask you, all of you, do you have peace? See, let me share something, y'all, that I love about coming to church here. I notice that I preach fast enough. I notice that I move quick enough. I notice that if you go to sleep, that I can get to where you're at pretty quick. And I know that all of y'all know this, and I know that everybody pays attention, but I'm going to tell you something that I, that I noticed. I look out here, and I saw all of you raising your hands. And what you told me is that tomorrow, tomorrow, if Jesus comes back, tomorrow I'm going to be in heaven. So all of you ought to have a peace about what God is doing in your life. Let me go on further. And it says, long-suffering. Here's where I'm struggling at. I struggle with long-suffering. I struggle with that word patience. I struggle with knowing that knowing that I've got to wait till next Saturday in order for us to go out there and do something else over here. I struggle with that. Y'all might think, Brother Steve, that's crazy. Go out there and do it yourself. Well, I can't do it myself. You know why? I don't have nobody to drag me around out there if I'm doing it by myself. I have to find patience everywhere I can. And I'm going to share something with y'all. This is a virtue that I'm looking for. And a lot of times, whenever I, I see patience come up in my life, it's because God makes me have patience. God will put me in a position in my life that I cannot handle things, and God will say, I want you to wait on me. I want you to be still. I want you to be calm. I want you to pray. 
There was somebody back here that, that this morning I was talking to, and they was talking about people praying for them. They was talking about some test results. Did you know I had I had test run maybe Thursday? I think it was Thursday. I had some test run, and whenever I was there running those tests, the, the lady she was she was running those tests on me, and 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 I would I would ask her a question. I'd say, Well, does it look like I'm going to die? She's like, well, we can't talk about this because we've got to get it to your doctor. And she'd go to, to another vital organ and I'd say, does it look like that organ is black? Black, white? You know, I don't know what color the organ was supposed to be. And I'd look at her eyes and she'd say, you know I can't tell you that. And she'd go to another organ and I'll say, am I going to die today? Or is it going to be a year from now? Or, and she'd just, she said, no matter how you ask these questions, I cannot answer you. I said, you could wink, you could nod, you could do this. You know, I'm just sitting there thinking, all right, how long have I got? How long have I got with these organs that we're looking at? And if there's nothing wrong with them, then I don't, listen, I don't, how many of y'all have the patience to wait on a doctor to call you in three weeks after you had your test run? None of you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't have that gift, spiritual gift of waiting. But you know something? I've got to. Did y'all know something? I'm pretty excited about Jesus coming back too. It's hard for me to have patience about Jesus coming back because it's something that I don't know when it's going to happen. See, I want to tell y'all point blank. I want to say, hey, Jesus is coming back in three weeks. You better be ready. But I don't know that. I want to tell y'all, Jesus is going to come back before we get to Operation Christmas Child Box is gone. I don't know that. But what I do know is, is that Jesus is coming back. I'm, going to tell you, I'm not going to hold my patient of knowing him as Lord and Savior until that day comes. I had a guy tell me the other day, he told me, he said, I'm not ready to be saved and I have plenty of time. Man, that's like shaking your fist at God saying, God, I know that I have time because the Bible says that nobody knows the day nor the hour. Not even Jesus Christ. He don't know that. I've got to go on. Let me read this. Let me go on. The Bible says also gentleness. I believe I'm pretty gentle at times. Goodness means you're, you've got generosity about you. Faith, that means that I depend on the Lord no matter what. Meekness, gentleness, being kind against where there's no law. I read that to you because all these things are things that God is working on me on. But listen to this right here. I want you to pay attention to this. There's sorrow around everybody's corner sometimes. This world that we're living in is not supposed to be peaches and cream all the time. It's not supposed to be good. It's not supposed to be great all the time. It don't work like that. Sometimes we have knees that hurt. Sometimes we have shoulder surgery. Sometimes we have death. Sometimes we have problems in our life. But I want y'all to know something. The thing that I want y'all to know is there's a finish line. And I want to read to you about this finish line. The Bible says in verse 2, Here's the finish line. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The finish line is Jesus. Listen to what it says. Who for the joy was set before him. I want to tell you all something about this joy that the Bible talks about. This joy does not mean that Jesus enjoyed all the pain that he had on that cross. It does not mean that Jesus did not feel every one of those nails that was put in him. It did not mean that Jesus didn't feel the pain from the stripes. It did not mean that Jesus Jesus didn't feel it whenever they was pulling his, his hair out and whenever they was pulling his beard out. It did not mean that Jesus had the joy of all the hearing them holler, crucify him, crucify him. There was no joy in that. What there was joy in is whenever Jesus, the Bible says that he endured, listen to this, that he endured that cross. Y'all ever think about the endurance? of whenever Jesus willingly, he said that he could have sent 10,000 angels. Did y'all know that all these people that were screaming crucify him, all these people who were spitting on him and spitting in his face. Now I'm gonna ask you men, I wanna ask you a question. You let somebody spit in your face, 
And what are you going to be ready to do? You're going to be ready to fight to the death. That's what we do. Don't let nobody slap me. We're going to be fighting to the death because we're prideful. But my Savior, he allowed people to spit on him and mock him and slap him in the face and pull his hair out because he knew he had to go to that cross for you. It's hard for us to read these scriptures and realize how much love Jesus truly had for us, isn't it? The Bible says that he endured the cross, despising the shame of how people were talking to him. I'm not even going to tell you some more shame. The Bible says whenever Jesus was hanging on that cross right before he died, he had been walking with his father. He'd been praying to the father every day. And the Bible says that Jesus said, Father, why have you forsaken me? All of his life, he had been walking with, the, with his heavenly father. And can you imagine all those people that laughed at him whenever he said, why have you forsaken me? And now he's sitting on the right hand of God the Father. I'm going to tell you something that kills people's happiness more than anything in the world. Y'all ready to hear it? What kills people's happiness is whenever they start comparing themselves to somebody else. Whenever people compare themselves to somebody else, you know what it does? It starts, it starts bothering them. Jason, I want you to stand up if you don't mind. Stand up. Hurry up. Hurry up. I got your name right. You know. He and I, and there's probably four or five of us that was in there and we was eating lunch. Actually, we was eating our second lunch to be actually, if you don't know the truth, Gary. And this one was baloney, by the way. First one wasn't. This one was baloney. We was loving what we were doing, but I'm going to tell you what we started doing. We started comparing. If anybody else is in there, y'all can stand up because I don't, I don't remember. I just remember that he and I was talking about all of our pains, aches, gallbladders, uh, we could go, there you go, there you go. I just want to see if they do it. All right, and we were sitting in there and we was talking. Thank y'all very much. No, stay stood up, stay stood up. It may, hey, it makes the story so much better. And all of a sudden with us there talking about how, are y'all getting what I'm, where I'm at? Oh, we was aching and paining. And then all of a sudden, Chris, stand up. Chris walked in the door. And the first thing that we said is, we hate him. You know what? Hey, he, oh, he, walked, he walked in the door like this. Boy, he was, he was looking so good. Hey, all of us was like, man, our back's killing us. We're so sore. He'd been here the same length of time as us. He walked in here and he, he was like, give me some of them sandwiches. Oh, you follow me? But, but listen, thank y'all. Y'all can be sat down. But whenever we said that, every one of us just died out laughing because we all knew what we meant. We was comparing ourselves to a guy that was this tall. Blind. He, he looked like the, the Russian on Rockies, what he looked like when he come in. <laughs> but you know something? I don't need to compare myself to him. You know why? My wife may not like a good looking blonde headed guy. All right. uh, Walter, stand up there. And I look at Walter and I stood by him and my wife don't want all that hair. You follow me? So I want y'all to know we're not in a point of our life that we start looking and we get our joy and our happiness by comparing ourselves to other people. Let me tell you where I get my joy from. I get my joy from when I compare myself to Jesus Christ and him alone and I say, oh Lord, one of these days I want you to look at me and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That's where I get my fulfillment from. Now I'm going to tell you, I admit I could probably do something to make myself look a little bit better, but I'm never going to look like that again. But I have joy in my Savior. Ladies, I want you to know something. You don't need the most beautiful man in the world. Men, you don't need the most beautiful woman in the world. You need a godly man and a godly woman that's joined together in one accord and that your hearts are right and you're in line because the Bible says that there's supposed to be one man and one woman. 
forever and ever. It don't matter what the world says. God says you need to, hey, separate yourself from your father and mother and then that's whenever you start loving your wife, men. Be the man of God that God calls you to be. It's important that we do that. As I was reading all this scripture, all these scriptures get me to the point that I'm going to read this. And I want to, I want to tell you what, what God said in the Bible. If y'all turn Philippians, and I'm about through. Because I want y'all to think about Jesus. Nobody compared Jesus to nobody else. The Bible says that he wasn't something pretty to look at. The Bible says that he didn't have any features that would grab your attention. The Bible says that, that he was humbled to the point just like a lamb to the slaughter. This is the way the Bible talked about him. And I'm going to read you this scripture because I want y'all to think about this because there's, there's nobody in the world that we compare to, can compare to Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, but Jesus, because of Jesus' happiness and joy, I'm going to read this Bible, and it says in Philippians 2, 7, but Jesus made himself of no rep reputation. Did y'all know Jesus didn't, didn't compare himself to nobody? Jesus didn't care about what people thought. Whenever Jesus was, uh, some of you children whenever, that's about 12 years old, whenever Jesus was, was there and he went to that, went to that temple and he was, he was preaching and teaching with all the people, he didn't care what anybody thought about him, but I want y'all to listen. And he took upon him a form of a servant and he was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the, the fashion or the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even that death of the cross. And the Bible says, I want you to pay attention about this, because here's the end. Wherefore God has highly exalted him, and he has given him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every need, let me, let me share this with you. Have y'all ever heard people say, all right, let's take a knee and pray. And they get up there and they take one knee. Have y'all seen that? They take one knee and they, and they get down there and pray. Let me share something with you. That's all well and good, but the Bible says in the last day that every knee, listen, that every knee, they're gonna get down on their face before God. They're gonna bow down all the way to the ground and the Bible says that every single knee is gonna bow and listen to what it says, of things of heaven and things of earth and everything under the earth and every tongue, every word that comes out of your mouth, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is God. Listen to the glory of God. Let me share something with y'all. Right now, I believe that people, that they are playing being religious. They are people who are out there and boy, they get down and they, they say, oh, I'm gonna pray, but their heart is not in it. You watch these people today whenever they go to that altar and they're finding happiness in this altar of God. You watch these people. They get down at this altar and they bow their head before God. And listen, whenever you get down before God, you're lifted up by God. Everything you do in your life. Brother Steve, I'm too embarrassed about my life to get to that altar. You should be too embarrassed not to. That's where you do business with God. Hey, if you're too embarrassed to go in front of people, then do it where you're at. It's time that our knees bow before God. It's time that our tongue confess the Lord Jesus. It's time in our life that we have happiness, love, joy, peace, happiness, contentment. It is time that I have patience. It is time that we serve this God and we love him all the way to our bottom core of our life. If he saved your soul, he may look at you in this morning and say, you need to tell that person that you smiled at a while ago, I'm going to the altar, I wanna pray with you. Or you grab their hand right where they're at and you say, hey, can I pray with you? I watch y'all do that. I watch you be an example of godliness. I watch you sit in your pew and reach over there and pray with people. Don't ever miss God. Don't ever miss God in a service. Because one of these days, these people that says they're atheist, agnostic, or whatever name they call themselves, every knee is going to bow. But all of you that raised your hand, that you're sincerely right between you and the Lord, every one of y'all don't have to worry about it. You know why? Because you done got your heart right with Jesus Christ. 
Make sure you're right. Lord, I come to you. God, I lift up the name of Jesus, the name that's above all other name, Lord. And at the name of Jesus, every one of us are going to bow down before you. Lord, you came here as a humble servant and you died on the cross for the sins of this world. But God, one of these days, we're going to bow down at your cross. And God, today we're going to bow down to you. And we're going to worship you. And we're going to praise you. And we're going to be happy at knowing that you're our Savior. And we're going to leave out of here and take Tell people about you, Lord. That's my prayer. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As we stand.